So this is my original image of that textured image. And it was photographed indoors. I think I just put a piece of white foam core. Let me open that up. Oh, so you didn't extract that. That's just incredibly no, well lit white background. Yeah, it's just a white lit. I mean, I actually, this was my raw photograph. Yep. And then I did, I do kind of basic edits in Lightroom. And then I always, I, this is a already processed image. But, um, I always use uh, the Topaz Labs filters. This one I use detail. Um, I usually use clarity. Okay, I'm going to open this up in Photoshop now. All right, let me go and open up my textures. Uh, let's get into textures one. I'm going to be using a texture from the Lake Textures Volume 1 collection. I think that's in my second folder. Yes. I'm going to be trying this using this texture, Sentier Forestier, which is French for forest path. How long have you lived in France for, Leslie? Um, gosh, it's been about 10 years now. Beautiful country, though. Okay, I'm going to rotate this to, to uh, vertical. So rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now, one of the questions we had was, how do I choose my textures? And that's kind of the beauty of textures is just trying things. You will, um, as you use textures more, one, you'll get you'll get a feeling for what works, and two, your own vision will emerge. Like the texture I choose is going to be different than the texture you choose. So it's a lot of playing. It's a lot of playing around, and not everything's going to work. Believe me, I have a lot of images where the texture just it didn't work. So part of texture work is just playing around. Okay, I'm going to stop real quick. Like I said last time, I know a lot of people like to do a file place embedded when they place textures, but I like working in tabs. It just, it works better for me. I have other reasons why I like to do that, but I'm not going to get into it right now. Um, I just like working in tabs, which you can go, if you do window, arrange, consolidate all the tabs, it'll give you tabs. And with the move tool selected, that's the top tool here. It looks like the crossed arrows. I'm just going to grab it, drag it over to my tech, my image, hold down shift and drop it on there. You hold on shift because it then it centers the texture. Mm -hmm. Okay. My texture is bigger than my image. So I'm going to resize it. So command or control T and now I'm going to do command or control zero. So I can see all of my bounding backs around my texture. Okay. Yeah, that's super helpful. Right. And we and we talked about this um, recently, Leslie. How Photoshop, uh, with a recent update, it now doesn't con it constrains the proportions. Yeah, you know how you used like, to have to hold shift. Now I have to hold down shift here to get it to fit exactly the way I want it to. Mm -hmm. Hit enter. Okay, I'm going to do something. I'm going to back up real quick. I want to show you guys a fun trick. I'm going to go back to my texture. I'm going to do Command Option I, which I believe in Alt in uh, PC is Control Alt I, which brings up the image size dialog box. Now here's a fun trick: go up to Window, go down to the bottom here, and find the image that you want your target image. So the my flower image in this case, and select that, and this will automatically size it to fit exactly your target document. That's useful. Now I'm going to drag that over, holding our shift again. Now it's perfectly resized. I'm going to get rid of the other one. So that's another way to size your textures before you place them. If you know you want it to be exactly um, sized. Mm -hmm. I don't usually make uh, my textures into smart objects because it's not very usual that I re resize them. All right. I'm going to switch this blend mode to multiply and then I'm going to tell you why. So like I said before, um, texture work is all about blend modes. I'm going to zoom that in a little bit here. So that's normal. You don't see anything. Multiply 
and that texture is now blending with the flower image. And why did I choose multiply? I made a little graphic here on the different blend modes in Photoshop and what you'd be using in, in um, most with photography. Can you see here that they're kind of grouped? Yeah, yeah. Like, so Photoshop kind of groups these blend modes into what they do. So this first group, or well, the very first grouping is normal and dissolve, and you're never going to use dissolve on Photoshop on uh, Photographs. <laughs> At least it's pretty it's not the most attractive, is it? Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever used Dissolve. No. <laughs> in, you know, I don't know how many years. So the next grouping are what are the darken uh, blend modes. And the one that you're going to be using the most is Multiply, sometimes Linear Burn. Um, but that will darken. It'll, it'll basically cover up anything that's white. The next grouping, I'm going to show you some examples later on about on these two, is Lighten. So... Um, this will be a lighten blend modes. Uh, the next grouping with the overlay soft light are the contrast saturation. And I'm going to leave it there for now and come back to that. But the ones you're going to use the most are multiply, screen, overlay, and soft light. I love it. And, and then, Leslie, if you've seen with uh, things like photo manipulation, the screen blend mode is used so often. So if someone wanted to use Photoshop to have flames or smoke coming into an image, you would take a photo where the background behind the fire or the smoke was black. You just apply a screen blend mode and then it would look like the fire or the smoke or whatever effect was actually floating over your image. Yeah, screen has some really surprising um, results. I, I have one example here. You, with textures, like what's, what's really interesting, if there's a black texture with, with some like scratches in it, if you apply the black texture and select screen, all you'll see is the scratches. The black will just mm -hmm. totally disappear. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great use. 